We'd like to say good morning to everyone and welcome to St. John's East United Church of Christ here in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, we welcome those of you uh, that are worshiping with us live here in the sanctuary, as well as those of you that may be joining us uh, via live stream. In the gospel according to John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. As you look up to the front here, uh, the two altar candles uh, are lit to remind us of Jesus, who of course we know is the light of the world. He is both human as well as divine, and uh, we encourage you to light your own candle so we can share the, this worship time together, uh, whether we again are gathered here in the sanctuary, at home, at work, riding in your cars, or elsewhere. Let us begin our worship together knowing this one truth, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Good morning. We have a special one-time announcement. We are so glad that Nelson has joined us this morning. He has been joining us Facebook every Sunday. Um, but today he got a nudge from Carolyn, his former wife who is up there listening too. And she nudged him this week and said, get out and get to church. But here's the special announcement. We're gonna think that it's February, but it's just a celebration for Nelson's 80th birthday yesterday. So we're gonna sing happy birthday to Nelson. We gather here in anticipation, seeking an encounter with our holy God, who comes among us when we least expect it, who invites us to wrestle with our questions and doubts, who richly blesses us and calls us each by name. Let us worship God together. Would you join me in a word of prayer? God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you for every blessing, for every benefit we acknowledge and re-acknowledge that they all come from you. God, as we take a retrospective look uh, back across this past week, we uh, realize, understand, and appreciate that you've been with us every step of the way. We pause to say thank you. The fact, God, that you even woke us up this morning, God, we thank you that you uh, 
blessed us with a reasonable portion of health and strength, God, we, we thank you. Um, and even as Nelson was nudged this morning, many of us were nudged uh, when God touched our eyelids with a finger of his love and encouraged us to get up and get dressed and come to the house of prayer to give your name, praise, honor, and glory, God, we, we thank you for that. And then for those of us, God, that may be going through, may be struggling with some situation or circumstance, we still give you praise because we understand what the word says. Romans 8, 28, God, you told us that you're working all things out together for our good, for those of us that love you and that are called according to your purpose. So God, we thank you for this time of worship, for this time of fellowship, and for this opportunity to praise a God that sits high, looks low, knows, and does all things well. God, as we go further into this worship experience, God, I ask a special blessing on every individual, every family member that is represented here. And yes, God, even as we go across the airways, those that may be worshiping with us in their houses, in their cars, in their kitchens, in their bathrooms, in their living rooms and dining rooms. There is no distance in the spirit. You are an omnipresent God. So God, uh, even as the word goes forth later uh, today, we ask that you speak to me and then I, and you speak through me as we bless the people of God with the word of God. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our first scripture comes from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26, the King James Version. Lord, bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. From Psalm 121, the title was God, the help of those who seek him. I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Thank you, Ginger. We um, now, as we do each and every Sunday, uh, would like to recognize our prayer requests and uh, any praise reports um, that anyone may have. Um, I'll go ahead and start, and then if there are any that may have been missed or overlooked, you're certainly welcome. Uh, to share. Um, 
we have Andy that is recovering uh, from a seizure and has been transferred to Encompass. So we're praying for Andy. Um, we, of course, are have already recognized uh, Fletcher, celebrated 80 years yesterday. Congratulations. I'd uh, like to recognize uh, my own pastor, Reverend Dr. Agent and Brooks Sr. that uh, also celebrated a birthday yesterday. Uh, congratulations. Um, grieving families, and unfortunately we have several this morning, all of which um, I know and knew personally. Uh, the families of uh, Verno, uh, Booter Hall, uh, brother of Dean Hall, longtime uh, friend, uh, was funeralized earlier this week. Uh, don't have details of arrangements, but the family of Reverend Thomas Strait, uh, young preacher, pastor, loved to hear him preach and sing, former pastor of the Eastview Baptist Church, uh, Sister Donia McGee, who will be funeralized uh, tomorrow. Um, Brother Ronnie Fendrick, who was a member of our Golden Age Breakfast Club. Uh, before the pandemic, we met once a month over at Liberty Baptist Church. So praying for uh, his family, his brother uh, John, who is a friend of mine. Uh, we also have prayer requests for healing. Uh, Janet Johnson, who I believe is in Tennessee. Uh, Janet Johnson, who is in Tennessee, one of Pat's co-workers, Cliff Fletcher. Uh, for healing. Um, I see Sam is here this morning, my uh, longtime friend and chess buddy, um, who uh, is also uh, healing from a recent procedure, so we're lifting him up as well. Uh, anyone else have a prayer request or a praise report that they would like to share before we pray? Ginger. So uh, Ginger's husband, Jerry, uh, got his appointment set for this Friday. So we want to go ahead and thank God in advance for a successful procedure. Anyone else? Thank, thank you so much. Let's pray. God, you, you heard these prayer requests. You know the situations and the circumstances. Whether it's an upcoming procedure, whether it's a recent recovery, uh, whether um, the family has been uh, touched by the death angel, God, you know and do all things well. When situations and circumstances, God, in life um, happen, and they do happen to each and every one of us, um, we realize we have someone that is bigger than us, that is greater than us, that is more powerful than us, someone that can and will get us through. There's a reason why we share each and every Sunday the benefit, the blessing, the advantage of having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because of that relationship, God, when we struggle, when we go through, the word tells us that we don't go through alone because you have promised to be with us. So God, we ask that you be with every individual, every family, even those that are grieving right now, those of us that have that uh, special, that unique relationship with you, we grieve God, but we don't grieve as those that have no hope because we realize according to your word, we will see our loved ones again. So God bless us as only you can bless us. And then we will continue to give your name praise in Jesus name, all that agreed said amen. amen. If we may uh, pray the Lord's prayer together in unison, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever, amen.
Thank you so much, Brother Henry. And again, it's certainly good to see each and every one of you uh, here with us this morning. Um, as I usually say here on Sunday mornings, I, I was certainly glad when they said unto me, uh, let us go into the house of the Lord. Um, if you would this morning uh, turn in the Old Testament, first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. And when you get there to chapter 32, let your fingers do the walking down to verses 24. We'll read 24, 25, and 26. Genesis chapter 32, beginning our reading at verse 24. As we always do each and every Sunday, whether it's a uh, physical Bible, uh, cell phone, whatever type of electronic device, if you'll put your hand on it, repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Genesis 32 reading from the King James Version, starting there at verse 24, and Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Verse 26, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. I'd like to talk about for a few minutes this morning, I want the blessing. I want the blessing. Growing up in the Herring household in the mid to late 1960s, and even into the decade of the 1970s, one of the fundamental principles we learned as children under the leadership of the late John Douglas Herring and Lou Helen Herring was the value of a good work ethic. Uh, now don't get it uh, twisted as a child, we didn't always like doing those chores Steve will remember this partial list, making up your bed, washing and drying the dishes, sweeping and mopping the floor, vacuuming the carpet, and my all-time least favorite, washing the woodwork. As Gomer Powell would say, golly, and I hated washing woodwork. And that's just a partial list uh, of the indoor chores that we were required to do. Of course, there were outdoor chores as well, cutting the grass, raking and bagging leaves, shoveling snow during the wintertime. If you were a herring child, there was work that was going to be done. And these were uh, not considered paid positions. Uh -huh. It was clearly explained to us that our pay, uh, if there was a roof over your head, if there were clothes on your back, if there was food on the table, if there was electricity for heat in the winter and uh, fans in the summer, I, I really wanted to impress y'all and say air conditioning, but back then it was window fans. Uh, but things did progress. As a teenager, I can still remember my first part-time job. I was a, a sacker, sack boy at the old A&P grocery store. Uh, my, I can still remember his name. My, my first boss, my first manager was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ralph Frills. And that was the first time I had ever received a paycheck for my labor. Later, one of my dad's best friends, the late Mr. Sam Shamel, took me under his wing, gave me another job, loading and unloading trucks for H.A. Woods. 
again, an actual paid position. Those principles of a good work ethic followed me right on into young adulthood, which also taught me this very important lesson. Everything in life, um, some things in life, you and I are just going to have to work for. Everything was not going to be given to us. It was not going to be laid in our lap. It was not just going to be handed over to me. And as I continued to grow and mature in life, I figured it out. Some things that are worth having are worth working for. Most of you that have been saved for a while, you've been on this uh, faith journey for a while, understand that we serve a God that is all-knowing, a God that is all-powerful, all-gracious. He's all-present at all times, but yet that God is not going to do it all for you. He's not going to do it all for me. There are some things that you and I are going to have to work for. And I believe one of the reasons for that is if God would simply give us everything, we'd be like a lot of the young people I see today. We'd become spoiled and we would not appreciate what we have. Certainly we would not be grateful. Now keep in mind this morning that if I know I want the blessing, you know you want the blessing, guess what else? The devil knows that you want the blessing. And he's going to do everything he can to hinder and to keep me and to keep you from receiving anything and everything that you and I want from God. But I've learned, my brothers and sisters, that my biggest hindrance in life from receiving the blessing that I want. It's not my enemies, it's not my adversaries, it's not my haters, and many times it's not even Satan. But in order for me to get what God has in store for me, my biggest, my biggest blockage is my own self. Somebody say, it's me. In this text, we find a man by the name of Jacob that is going to be blessed. We find a Jacob that is going to become the nation Israel. We find a Jacob that even unbelievers today have to declare his name Israel. A Jacob that was a promised child. A Jacob that uh, was already positioned with the power and the promises of God. A Jacob that eventually would be promoted to a stature that only God could give him. But in order for God to move Jacob from, move him from Jacob to Israel, he didn't have to deal with Esau. He didn't have to deal with his enemies. The person that he had to deal with and work on was Jacob. Somebody say, he needs to work on me. I didn't hear y'all. He needs to work on me. Many times we try to shift the blame. We try to point the finger. But in order for God to take us from where we are and to get us to where he would have us to be, we have to somewhere, uh, at some point, get along with God where only you and God can work on your personal issues, your present problems that are in your own personal life. And we got to admit, we all have those issues. We all have those problems. Y'all have heard me say in messages before, your issue may not be my issue. My issue may not be yours, but we all have some issue, some problem, some situation that we struggle with. Uh, my mama used to say to us at, as kids when we were doing something we didn't have any business doing, my mama would say, y'all getting into devil mint. Uh, I know a lot of us like to proclaim that we're on our way to heaven, but the truth of the matter is there's still a little hell in you. I know you've been delivered, but there's still a, a little devil in you. I know you consider yourself godly, 
But if you be honest this morning, there's still a little gangster in you. You're a believer, but you still get a little belligerent sometimes. I understand that you're righteous, but you can still get rowdy. I know that God has been good to you, but if the truth be told, you haven't been as good to God as you could have been. So in order for God to get me to where he wants to place me, I have to allow him to get me by myself, get me alone so he can work on me. Before God could work on Jacob, he had to reveal some things to Jacob. He had to reveal to him that some of that devilish behavior was in his DNA. There were some things that were in his bloodline. Even though scriptures tell us that uh, Jacob was a trickster and a deceiver, there were people, family members before Jacob that had done it before. We need to realize that one of the reasons you and I don't have to learn all the negative behavior that we sometimes practice, it's already in. It's already in our DNA. No one had to teach you to go to the nice nightclub because you weren't the first one in your family to go to the nightclub. No one had to teach you to drink alcohol because you weren't the first alcoholic in your family. Nobody had to teach you how to lie because you weren't the first liar in your family. No one had to teach you how to do wrong because you weren't the first wrongdoer in your family. But at some point, someone in the family has to decide that they're going to break the cycle. Many of you have heard this term, generational curses. You, 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 you know what a generational curse is. It's where you see the same negative patterns of behavior generation after generation. You know how it works. Granddaddy was a high school dropout, got into trouble as a youth, ended up in prison. Then the daddy repeated the same behavior, and lo and behold, now he's incarcerated. And his son is now skipping classes at school, considering getting into a gang, and eventually he will end up in jail. Uh, grandmother got pregnant as a teenager and got on welfare. Her daughter ends up doing the same thing and now her daughter is having unprotected sex. Grandfather started drinking at a young age and becomes an alcoholic. Father fo follows in his footstep, drinks all the time and now his teenage son is experimenting with alcohol. Now those are my generic uh, examples if you allow me to make this a little uh, more up close and personal. My grandfather, the late Reverend Hughie Dillard, my grandfather on my mama's side was a smoker. Uh -huh. And he didn't just smoke any kind of cigarettes, he smoked camels. And I'm strong, man, that's some strong cigarette. I'm talking about a camel with no filter on it. Then I noticed both my mama and my daddy were cigarette smokers, generation. I'm grateful to God that none of the five children, me, Steve, Cliff, Julie, or Mike, became cigarette smokers. We broke the cycles. I sometimes wonder how we did it because, see, back in the 60s and 70s, you didn't have the restrictions on tobacco and smoking that we have today. You could smoke anywhere, anytime, all the time. Uh, how many of y'all have heard the term secondhand smoke? You're looking at a secondhand smoke survivor because there was never a time when you rode in the Herring automobile that somebody wasn't smoking. Normally my mom and my daddy. I can remember them loading all five kids up to go to the drive-in and that smoke was all up in there. We was inhaling it and never knew the dangers of cigarette smoke. But somebody, somebody in the family had to break the cycle. What do you do when you want the blessing? What do you do when you need the blessing, but you're the blockage? What do you do when you need God to deliver you to your destiny, but you're your own dilemma? Now, I know I'm talking to somebody in here today besides me and Jacob. You can testify that you got some stuff in your life 
that has put you in a position where you don't just want a blessing. The fact of the matter is you need a blessing. You're not just looking for a blessing. You need a blessing. In fact, at this point, it's become a do or die situation. Things are either going to get better or they're going to get worse. You're at a crossroads in your life. You're either going to have a breakthrough or you're going to have a breakdown. So you need a blessing. So in order to get that blessing that you want, in order to get that blessing that you need, three things you're going to have to do. Number one, you're going to have to be willing to go through solitude. The text says in verse 24 of the 32nd chapter of Genesis that Jacob was left alone. One of the things to remember when you're alone, you can't shift the blame. There have been times when all of us got into some type of trouble with someone else or even a, a group of individuals. In other words, we had a partner in our problem. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this blessing that I'm talking about this morning is personal. In this case, I don't really need God to work on us. I need God to work on me. And the only way that I can really look at myself is for God to move all the other folk out of the way. Sometimes we think that people have left us or they've dropped us, but maybe God just moved them out of the way. Another aspect of this solitude, being left alone, and I'm grateful to God that he doesn't, he doesn't always handle my personal problems in public. There are some things, some stuff that we all have that only you and God know about. Depending on your current situation at the present time, you may have had parents, if they're still living, that have been with you your entire life. You've had close friends that you've known since grade school or high school. You have a spouse or a significant other that has known you for months or years or even decades. But I don't care how close someone has become or been to you or how long they may have known you, they don't know everything about you. There are some things in your life that only you and God know about. And the good thing about God not handling my personal problems in public is that if he did, it would make my ministry ineffective. Think about it this morning. If you knew everything about everybody, you really wouldn't want to hear anything that they had to say. I know y'all ain't going to say amen, but if all of you in here this morning knew everything about me, many of y'all would have left as soon as I stepped up to the pulpit. If you knew everything about the soloist, you wouldn't want to hear them sing. If you knew everything about the musician, you wouldn't want to hear them play. If you knew everything about everybody, you wouldn't, want, you wouldn't interact and deal with them the way you do now because some things in life are personal and private and I'm grateful to God that the Lord loves me enough to deal with me when I'm all alone. Somebody repeat after me, that's private. Truth be told, some of, the peop some of, these, some of these things other people don't need to know about. I believe one of the reasons that God doesn't reveal everything about us in public is because he wants to empower you, not expose you. You see, we live in a world today, y'all know how it works. We live in a, day, a world today of uh, exposure, not empowerment. Uh, today's society, you can't do or say anything without it being recorded, videoed, then broadcast it on the news, on the internet, on television, on social media. Last night, my wife and I uh, watched a little bit, I think Pat watched it all, uh, we watched a little bit of Wendy Williams' uh, documentary. You saw it, Vita? You, you saw it, didn't I know, I, uh -huh, I know you watched it. <clears throat> and I gotta tell y'all, I'm, I'm not a real big fan. Uh, Wendy Williams, I, Pat, I know you like her. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a big Wendy Williams fan. But Wendy Williams is the classic example of what I just shared about exposure. Her entire radio program, she started out in radio, 
before she got to Here's Wendy, before she got to the television program, she, uh, in fact, and, 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 and I learned some things in watching that documentary. Early in her career, she would grab every, what do you call it, gossip magazine or whatever, and find every piece of dirt, every piece of information that she could talk to you about somebody else. Um, Wendy cried a lot in that program last night, and I understand why she cried. Because she was open, honest, and transparent enough to talk about some of her own personal struggles. Some of y'all have heard me say this before. If you're a Christian, uh, it goes like this. If you're knowledgeable of the word of God, it goes like this. Uh, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I believe many of the problems that Wendy Williams personally experienced is because she was constantly planting those negative seeds, talking about other people's problems, have what their struggles were. Well, eventually, it comes back around. Oh, I said, if you're a Christian, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you're not a Christian, if you're listening on live stream this morning, you don't even believe in God, you don't even believe in the Bible, you don't believe in the Word of God, I got you too. What goes around? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It will eventually come back around. I found out that in order for me to be able to help somebody else, God first has to have me take an introspective look at myself. That's empowerment. Because when God reveals to me who I really am in private, I can see somebody else in public and have compassion enough to work with them because God in private has worked on me. So we first understand that if we want the blessing, we have to be willing to go through solitude. Secondly, if I want the blessing, you have to be willing to go through the struggle. The B clause of verse 24 in Genesis chapter 32 says, and there he wrestled with a man. The Hebrew connotation of the word wrestle is to struggle or to battle with. So Jacob is wrestling not just with a man, but a God man. Some say he was wrestling with an angel. And I would have us to notice that in this struggle, God is trying to make or remake or change Jacob, but God, but Jacob is trying to stay Jacob. Let me, let me repeat that. God is trying to make, remake, or change Jacob in the wrestling match, but Jacob is trying to what? Jacob is trying to stay Jacob. I believe one of our biggest challenges in life is why God is trying to make, remake, or change me. I'm busy trying to stay me. And one of the reasons you and I are busy trying to stay me is because if the truth be told, I like being me. You don't believe me? Let somebody start pointing out some of my flaws, some of my shortcomings, some of my handicaps. You know the first thing I'm going to say? That's just me. Uh, that's, just, that's just the way I am. We, we people start, uh, when people start saying, uh, you ought to quit doing this, you ought to quit doing that, uh, you ought to quit going off like that, you ought to quit cussing people out like that, you'll just say, just take me or leave me, because that's just me. I, I, I just got to be me. But if you're listening to me this morning, here's the deal. In order for God to bless me, I, I, I can't stay me. I have to allow God to make remake and create me to whom he would have me to be. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Uh, I, I need to be made over. Uh, I would also ask you to consider this morning as we deal with the concept of struggle to take a look at verse 27 when Jacob was asked this question. What's your name? This is the first time that Jacob has ever told the truth when he was asked this question. Jacob was known for, shall we say, false identity. He uh, tricked his daddy by impersonating his brother. False identity. 
uh, he stole his brother's birthright, false identity. But in order for God to bless you, you have to tell him who you really are. He said, my name is Jacob. I'm a trickster. I'm a deceiver. I'm a supplanter. And even today, in today's world, in today's society, we still have the problems of false identity. I, I just had another 1970s flashback. How many of y'all remember the soap opera, All My Children? Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. And in fact, that's, that's another thing my mama did to me. My mama got me hooked on, and she didn't call them, she didn't call them soap operas. She called them my stories. My, my, my mama got me hooked. She got me so hooked on, and I know some of my friends talked about me. I got so hooked on soap operas that even when I got my first job, full-time job, Anaconda Aluminum, over in Seabury, Kentucky, on my lunch break, I would go to the break room and watch all my children. Oh my God, okay, I, I was hooked, I was hooked. So, so here it is, here it is, false identity. When you hear the name Erica Kane, you know who that is, you know who it is. But see, Erica Kane is not really Erica Kane. Erica Kane played a role in all my children, but her real name is Susan Lucci. Somebody ought to say amen. But see, we don't just have the problem of false identities in the world, uh, in the entertainment industry. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, we're even guilty of it in the church. Even in the house of God, we cover up our real names with false identities. Reverend, doctor, Pastor, bishop, elder, deacon, evangelist, missionary, uh, minister of music, choir director, musician. What's your real name? Backbiter, backstabber, backslider, whoremonger, liar, gossiper. What's your real name? And what have we learned thus far? We've learned that we got to deal with solitude. We got to deal with this struggle. And the third thing, in order to get the blessing, you and I have to have stamina. We, we, we got to be able to hang in there. Look one last time at that B clause of verse 24. And there he wrestled with a man until the breaking of the day. The text here says, but it, and it doesn't give us uh, a specific designation of time, it just says until the breaking of the day. And uh, we, we don't know, it wasn't specified uh, what time this wrestling match started. We don't know if it was 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, if it was midnight, or we don't know if it was 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. All we do know that in order for Jacob to get the blessing, he had to what? He had to hold on until the breaking of the day. I believe this morning that one of the reasons God had Moses to write it like he wrote it in the book of Genesis is because he didn't want us to put a time frame on our struggle. I don't know if what you may be going through is going to last one day, uh, one week, one month, one year, or one decade. All I do know that is that if you really want the blessing, you're going to have to be willing to hold on until the breaking of the day. However long that may be, I don't care how many times you have to go to the doctor, you got to what? You got to hold on until the breaking of the day. I don't care how many times you have more month left over than you have money. You're going to have to hold on until the breaking of the day, no matter how many bad days you got to go through until you can get to a good day. I'm going to hold on until the breaking of the day, no matter how many trials come before the triumph. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hold on until the breaking of the day. Now, some of y'all uh, not going to want to hear this part. Sometimes before the day breaks, you got a break. Take a look at verse 25. And when he saw that he...
prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. He separated his hip. You know what we call that? That's the breakdown. But if you look a little further down at verse 31, it says, the sun rose upon him. You know what that is? That's the breakthrough. Let me rewind that. He touched the hollow of his thigh. That's the breakdown. The sun rose on him in verse 31. That's the breakthrough. And check this out. It's not breakthrough and then break down. It's break down and then break through. Somebody listening to me this morning, you may be going through a breakdown right now. But the good news is the next phase in the process after the breakdown is the breakthrough. And that simply means if I can hold on during the breakdown, my breakthrough is on the way. Sometimes during the breakdown, God has to dislocate some things. Oh, my God. To get us ready for our breakthrough. Some circumstances, some situations in order to properly prepare us for our breakthrough. And as we continue to talk about stamina here, please notice that Jacob didn't have to win this particular wrestling match. He didn't have to pin his opponent. He didn't have to make him submit. I don't know if y'all uh, used to be like me and watch fake wrestling uh, when they get him down on the mat and they really be hurt and they have their arm pinned. They finally go, bam, and, and it was over. Notice Jacob didn't have to win. He didn't have to get his opponent to submit. He simply had to hold on. Hold on through the pain. Hold on through the dislocation. Uh, he didn't need any special moves. He didn't need any special techniques. The only thing that Jacob had to do is just to hold on. So my sanctified imagination is telling me this morning that if that's true for Jacob, guess what? It's true for you and me. We don't have to do anything special. We don't have to do anything extraordinary. We simply just have to hold on. We have to be willing to have the stamina to hold on until the blessing comes. In verse 26, the angel said to Jacob, let me go for the day break it. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. For many of us, the reason why we don't receive the blessing is because you let go during the struggle. And I understand it. You get tired of the same old stuff. You get tired of the same old problems. You get tired of same old enemies. You get tired of the same old family members, same old co-workers, same old drama, same old sickness. But if I can just hold on through the pain, if I can prove to God that I've got the stamina when the sun rises, my breakdown is going to become my, bake, my breakthrough. My time is up. I'm, I'm finished. Let me, let me close it out like this. Back in, uh, back in 1988, when I was a member of New Hope, I had, the, I had the privilege of being our annual Men's Day speaker. The title of my message that day, 32, almost 33 years ago, was simply hang in, hold on, hold out. My belief is 30, the same belief that I had 33 years ago, I still have that same belief today. If we as children of God would hang in, hold on, hold out, God is going to come see about us after a while. So do you want the blessing? Do you really want it? Do you need the blessing this morning? Well, guess what? You now have the formula. You got to spend some time alone with God in solitude. Got to give him an opportunity to work on you. You got to be willing to endure during the struggle. I didn't, I didn't say it was easy, but you got to be willing to hold on during the struggle. And then last but not least, you have to have the stamina to hold on. In the Old Testament, it was Job that said, 
in all my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change comes. I want the blessing. Can we give God a hand clap of, hand clap of praise for the word of God? As we prepare to close our worship experience, um, there may be someone in the sanctuary or possibly uh, visiting with us via live stream. You, you heard the message and you agree. Uh, you want the blessing, you, you need a blessing. Well, let me tell you where your first blessing comes is when you confess your sins, tell God you're sorry, commit your life to him and allow him to be your Lord and Savior. Many times, sadly, we go through the rituals, we go through the motions of, of coming to church, singing, reading scriptures, even waving our hands, saying praise the Lord, hallelujah, but we've never made that commitment of our lives to him. Um, if you're listening this morning, this is your opportunity to do just that. God, I'm, I'm sorry, I understand that I'm a sinner, and I realize that I need to make a change in my life. God, come into my life, come into my heart, and I want, to, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. If you'll pray that prayer, you can be saved today. And uh, as we always encourage you, if you're in the sanctuary, we'll stay out in the hallway for a few minutes to talk to you more in detail. If uh, you're listening via live stream, go on the St. John's uh, Facebook page, go on my personal Facebook page, John D. Herring Jr. Uh, inbox me your information. I'll be glad to talk to you, uh, certainly about um, your own personal relationship with God. Um, at this time, uh, we want to uh, pray over our offering as uh, we prepare to give back uh, to God a, a portion of what he has so graciously already uh, shared with us. Um, I will uh, pray over the offering Henry will give us a selection, and then I will, uh, I will come back with the benediction. Father, thank you uh, for being the God that, who you are, that you are, the God that uh, provides not just finances, but you provide every perfect gift. They all come from you. Thank you, God, for life, health, strength, family, relationships, jobs, right uh, activities of our limbs. Again, God, every perfect gift comes from you. And because you um, are our source, we now give you back a portion of what you have already blessed us with. We ask God that you bless, multiply, sanctify these gifts, that they go for the ongoing as well as for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we prepare to give the benediction, I just want to uh, express my appreciation to um, the staff membership here at St. John's East. Uh, Y'all are always so uh, kind, so loving, so uh, friendly, and so encouraging. I uh, just want to let you know that it is much appreciated. Uh, also, uh, just want to express um, 
the appreciation for family. Um, I had the opportunity uh, to take my 11-year-old great-grandson out uh, yesterday for lunch. Uh, we had a great time, uh, played some chess, um, just enjoyed that fellowship. And I say that in the, from the standpoint, you know, we're dealing with this pandemic and, you know, all these people dying. Spend time with people that you love. Spend time and uh, let people know how much you appreciate them. Uh, I see my granddaughter and my great-granddaughter uh, came in uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, that's good, Pat, because I was going to fuss because uh, my granddaughter uh, was supposed to have called her pawpaw yesterday, and she missed that call. So I understand why she, yeah, she, she made it up. She, she showed up for church today. Where's uh, Damari at? Is she back there? I see it. Okay. Um, so we, uh, again, we, we appreciate our, our family, uh, our friends, uh, and our uh, loved ones. So uh, if nothing else, may we stand. Oh, and thank you, Ginger. Ginger uh, complimented me uh, on my suit today. She said, John, she said, where you, where you shop at? And of course, you know, I told her the whole story, how I used to shop down in Hopkinsville. But now, so I'm gonna get this commercial in, uh, Rita and Todd's Fashions. 815 John Street. Uh, Pastor Todd Robinson, his wife uh, Rita Robinson, they run a men and women's clothing store. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that commercial in for them. And uh, it's a serious commercial because everything is 50% off right now. Everything. 50% everything in the store. And that includes, I know my brother appreciate this, Stacy Adams shoes too. I got a prayer on this morning. Somebody ought to say amen. All right, all right. Let us pray. God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. Because you have been good, kind, gracious, patient, long-suffering, understanding toward each and every one of us. God, we pause and we tell you thank you. Now, God, we understand as we looked closer today at the 32nd chapter of Genesis, verses 24, 25, and 26, that if we want the blessing, if we need the blessing, we know what we need to do. Solitude, time with you, be willing to go through the struggle, and then when things get tough, when things get tight, even when things get broken or even dislocated, we're gonna what? We're gonna have the stamina. We're going to hang in, we're gonna hold on, we're gonna hold out until our blessing comes. God, because you are the God of all blessings, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. Now as we leave this place, but never from your care, let the words of my mouth, the very meditation of our hearts, let them be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are our strength. God knows you are our redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and soon coming King that we pray all that agreed said amen, amen. and thank God. Everybody have a blessed week.